As a young girl of five, with her father teaching her how to ride a horse, little did Rose Farmer imagine that one day she would grow up and meet the First Lady of the United States. Dressed in riding boots with a satchel of books at her feet, Rose would represent a group of women, Kentucky women, who would lead a force that brought books and education to the people of Appalachia. In the midst of a depression, these women found the courage and strength to ride horses and mules through flooded creeks and mountain trails. Delivering books to schools and homes, each became a welcome face throughout the mountains and earned the title Bookwoman. These were the pack horse librarians of Appalachia. Book woman, whoa, book woman, whoa. I go through a job of fire to bring food for your soul. There's no easy road, there's no easy road. I go through a job of fire to bring food for your soul. In the 1930s, as much of the nation fought to recover from a devastating depression that would earn the title, the Great Depression, the new Franklin Roosevelt administration sought ways not only to get Americans immediately back to work, but to use these new jobs to educate and expand culture throughout the nation through arts and libraries. This is at a time where some statistics put it up at 40% of folks were unemployed. So this was a desperate time, right? We were at the height of the Great Depression. We needed to put folks back to work. Eleanor Roosevelt was very influential in reminding uh, folks that we need to get women to work also, and they can also be contributors to a household. Led by the First Lady, the Works Progress Administration, or the WPA, discovered an idea begun in Kentucky to teach people the power of libraries and the benefits that borrowing books would bring to their lives. 20 years earlier, schools in Appalachia, like the Heinemann Settlement School, began sending their people by horseback to share books with the people of their region. In 1916, Berea College came up with the first bookmobile, or book wagon, hauling books into surrounding counties. You know, if you can't bring Mohammed to the mountain, bring the mountain to Mohammed, or the reverse kind of fits here. If you can't get the people to the library, then let's get the library to the people. That's a very innovative idea. And I think the WPA was innovative in all aspects. Perhaps the biggest role model for the WPA was May Stafford of Paintsville. In 1913, May came up with the idea of loading up her saddlebags and riding her horse to deliver books to neighbors in the hills of this coal country. May Stafford was a woman who was very, very interested in getting books into the hands of people in some of the more remote areas of Johnson County. So she came up with the idea of a pack horse library in which the librarians would, uh, would take the books to farmers living along creeks in Johnson County who didn't have easy access to come into town. She wanted folks to have access to what we, uh, to books, to be able to read, become uh, more knowledgeable, um, expand their life, expand what they knew and not just be right here in this area, but that there was a world out there. Eleanor Roosevelt's people initiated the Pack Horse Library Program. The idea was to establish a library in each county, fill it with books, and then hire women to ride off into the mountains to deliver these books. It made a difference in people's lives uh, when they had uh, an opportunity for something to read, to learn, learn something, maybe as how to make a quilt or how to can something, or something about a place that they never had seen and maybe never would. The idea of pack horse librarians took hold, and women, through need or curiosity, or the desire to help their fellow Kentuckians, applied for the program. There was one problem with this federal plan. 
The WPA would only provide funds to hire the riders, but nothing else.